Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is Nick Shalom. Thanks so much for joining us in this next episode of In the Nick of Time. Today, with a very special guest, General John Olson, he'll be sharing his thoughts on the data work and a lot of these uh, space work as well. And he's the first uh, chief data and AI officer, the, the AI piece being new uh, for the Air Force and Space Force title. So that's going to be exciting. We're excited to have uh, General John Olson. Before we get started, I wanted to remind everybody we have him for one hour. So put your question in the chat now. We already have a lot of questions from LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, so we'll go over some questions live. Uh, so do that now. Start with the queue so we know uh, it's a question. Also, if you want to share you here and uh, share your company and your name, just uh, uh, put that into the, the comment section below. We'll be able to light, highlight you on the screen. Uh, please do go on the internetcoptime.tv to register for the show so we can have... Uh, uh, the email is going to you to announce the, the next episodes. Uh, finally, wanted to remind you that we launched last week a weekly news segment. Uh, so you're going to see that uh, directly on YouTube. So you go to uh, YouTube and uh, <coughs> look at uh, my name and you're going to see the weekly uh, news flash segment. So that's exciting as well. All right. Without uh, further ado, I know we, uh, we only have uh, General Olson for an hour, so I'm going to bring him. And now to join us on the screen, uh, welcome, uh, Joe Olson. I hope you've been well. Uh, can you hear me well and okay? I just want to make sure the mic is working well at the Pentagon. Yes, Nick. I've got you loud and clear. How me? It's a pleasure. Ah, to very here. good. Perfect. We got you a hundred percent. So uh, I'm excited to see technology that works in the <laughs> Pentagon. Uh, that's not always the case. I was a little bit worried when uh, Lauren did it for the first time, and when she managed to do it, I felt a little bit better than. Uh, uh, for the first time. So um, uh, excited to have you on the show. Wanted to give a quick uh, quick background on your bio before we get started. Uh, of course, you're the, also people maybe don't know, but you're the mo mobilization assistant to the chief of space operation and the chief data and AI uh, officer, which is really kind of two major role. Uh, pretty rare to see a single person uh, do both, but because you're an overachiever, you're also the Space Force lead for Jet C2 and ABMS. And because none of that was enough, uh, you are also flying as the Airborne Emergency Action Officer aboard the Looking Glass Airborne Nuclear Command Post. Um, so I don't know how you do all this in uh, in a single day. Uh, most people couldn't do this in 20 years, but uh, you've done it. Of course, your background is pretty unique because you were also a CEO. Uh, you were on the commercial side for about uh, nine years. You also did a, a long uh, uh, period of time at, uh, as an SES at NASA. Uh, so you really touch every side of the business. Uh, that's what makes you uh, obviously very unique. And uh, you know, wanted to thank you for you obviously for your service going back into the Air Force after uh, leaving the commercial side. I know you would be making much more money uh, uh, staying on that uh, CEO slash uh, president roles. Uh, so excited to have you, and uh, wanted to give you the chance maybe first uh, for people that don't know you yet. Uh, to give maybe a little bit of uh, of a background regarding your journey. Well, thank you very much for that very kind and uh, and extensive introduction, Nick. You know, it's a uh, it's a pleasure here to serve you, the nation, and uh, humanity writ large. That's really why I've come back to the uh, to the Department of the Air Force, serving both at this unique time in history with the Space Force and and uh, of course uh, General General Raymond and the uh, Space Team. Uh, we're into our uh, we're starting our third year here uh, in existence having just celebrated our second birthday in december of last year and so it's an extraordinarily exciting time uh, for space indeed but also as we look at data and artificial intelligence uh, we are at a historically significant inflection point just absolutely ripe moment in history to truly harness the capabilities and full potential of of, of data which is really the core of everything. People and data are, are the most valuable things there are. Uh, and, and as we look at data, you know, I think some people say, um, you know, it's, 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 of course, a strategic asset. And maybe it's, you know, the new oil or the new gold. But I, I, I think that's not correct at all. I think it's much more uh, precious and valuable than that. I would call it the new plutonium in that it also needs to be refined and processed uh, but w but when we do the when we do that, it's absolutely going to power um, all, all all of our dreams and as aspirations and goals. It's 
it's it's the energy uh, that will drive us forward. And, and certainly as we have the Ukraine situation going on, the, the incredible rate and pace of, 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 of data driving data driven decisions and, and, and decision advantage, you see the potency of, of, of that. And of course, for the longer uh, the longer term uh, path, as we look at the uh, competition, crisis and conflict and integrated deterrence across the board, as we look at peer and near peer adversaries in the future, data and information are absolutely at the core. And so these 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 are all tied together. Similarly, like JADC2 or Joint All Domain Command and Control and, and the Air Force's uh, Advanced Battle Management System, that's really the ability to sense, make sense or act. So data intertwines in AI and ML as as machine to machine is so vitally important that that processing speed is 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 going to be what allows uh, uh, us to either succeed or not. And so all of these together, they're 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 really, uh, even though they sound fairly disparate and are indeed uh, uh, more than a full time job for 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 each of them, <laughs> putting them together creates an inherent or an organic synergy, and, and you know pragmatically, it's just one one less group or person to coordinate with. And so as as we know this big bureaucracy, we 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 got to find ways to make it go faster. And certainly, your message. Uh, as the as the first chief technology or first C chief software officer and and being so technology driven and technology rich, you know, from day one when I met you, uh, I think we we were kindred spirits. We shared this common sense of urgency coming from business, bringing that sense of 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 absolute return on investment, that absolute sense of agility. Uh, you know, waterfall is a swore, four letter F word. You know, we've got to be agile. We've got to be um, uh, and nimble in, in order to compete and win. And I, I, I truly believe that the United States of America uh, and our partners and allies and like-minded friends around the, uh, around the globe, we will win when we harness the full potential of our innovation base, our industrial base, our entrepreneurial capability, the diversity and richness of our societies and our, and our outlooks, but only if we harness it and bring it in alignment and, and, and do so well. Otherwise, it's it's very challenging against uh, civil military fusion and command directed economies. So I think that's critical. I think we all agree on that. And 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 really, it's about doing something, uh, not talking the words, but doing the actions. And so for that, I'm really thankful to be on your show. I, I, I'm I'm uh, I, I, I'm I'm quite honored to be here because I think you're probing at a level of detail and a level of intellectual rigor and a level of action oriented uh, movement uh, to, to, to make real positive impacts. And so it's great to be here. No, we're so excited you're here, John. And, and you know, when we met, I, I agree, you know, I, I was always very scared when the, the Space Force was created. Uh, you know, I've seen so many silos already in the Department of the Air Force. And, you know, a lot of people were afraid and I was afraid that uh, people would create more and more silos. And, you know, with a new SAE now for space and we have an SAE for, for the Air Force after Dr. Roper left, I was a little bit concerned that, you know, people will reinvent the wheel, create more, uh, more silo than we need. And when you, you know, joined um, last year or a year and a half ago now, um, I was so excited because not only you get the technology, which is pretty rare, right? I think in the department, unfortunately, uh, there is not a lot of very deep technical uh, expertise. So I was pretty excited to, to, to see you were there. And then you know, even more excited when you, we started talking and you started to share a little bit of your insights when it comes to where the Space Force uh, should be focusing and augmenting kind of some of the existing work that's been going on for years in the Air Force. And so, you know, my, my kind of the, the, we got so many questions from LinkedIn. I got over 250 questions. Wow. Uh, so a lot of people are excited to ask you uh, questions. Uh, but tell us a little bit about this new, so so you you were the, the, the first one to kind of rename the title with uh, the, the Chief Data and AI Officer. Why did you feel like, you know, adding AI was so important? Well, you know, it's really in response to a couple of uh, significant foundational memorandums uh, that were signed out. So the Deputy Secretary of Defense, uh, Hicks, she signed out her data decrees and her responsible AI tenants uh, memorandum uh, memoranda uh, last uh, May of 2021. And then in uh, September of 2021, uh, the Undersecretary of the Air Force signed uh, the 
implementing guidance that said we're going to put for the Department of the Air Force, which, like you said, is both Air Force and Space Force, we're going to put AI together with data. And I think that's a great decision because, as we know, about 80 to 85 percent of AI ML readiness is really data wrangling. You know, everything from data integrity to data cleansing to metadata tagging and formatting. It's a lot of tough, hard work. But when you do that, we can we, we can apply AI, ML, uh, deep learning, and, and, and a litany of of of, uh, of of tools and analytic capabilities. So we put that together, and it's really been about implementing that. And you know, I I, I assumed this role after taking over Ms. Eileen Vadreen, uh, who was the the prior chief uh, data officer for the Department of the Air Force. She's on a one year detail. Uh, to the Office of Management and Budget, or OMB, up at the White House, doing important work uh, driving data analytics and and and, and data uh, towards a much more central and responsive customer service role for for the Executive Office of the President. And having served there, I wanted to really enable this opportunity for her, and so uh, I ended up agreeing to to do this. Since uh, again, data and AI are so much at the core of the. Uh, you know, when we talk operationalization of data and AI, which is which is the the primary theme that I'm driving in 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 my tenure here, that's 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 really the quintessential example of that is 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 JADC2 and ABMS, and 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 I think um, the confluence and the timing of these, coupled with you know the, the the space criticality, I mean space is viable and vital for the space transport or sensing space transport, space networking, and space C2 roles, not just for the space uh, force in space, but to all of the other joint services uh, across all the domains. So, I mean, when you look at it, it's almost like the perfect alignment and, 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 and really it's about serving the nation and setting things up right with a great team of folks so that we can build on a foundation and rapidly accelerate. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the setup. Um, you know, one of the other first things that we did is, is, as I mentioned, with that responsible AI set of data decrees, um, I, I appointed uh, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Chapa. He goes by Gattuza as his call sign. But uh, Joe Chapa is a uh, Oxford PhD in philosophy um, and, and, and law of armed conflict and just extraordinarily uh, talented intellectually uh, in, in, in that field and domain. But he's also uh, a, a very experienced remotely piloted aircraft or RPA pilot. And so yeah. the coupling of his Oxford PhD and, and, and his, uh, and his uh, RPA experience is, is, is makes him the ideal person to serve as our first chief responsible AI ethics officer. And this is an enduring role because uh, one, that's just simply a rare skill set. And, and, and two, uh, as we look at uh, as as we look at the past efforts, um, you, you know we we're, we're familiar with the the 2017 letter signed by by uh, several luminaries in in the field of AI, and then the other the the, the next one um, with about 1,500 plus uh, signatories in in 2018 that went to the United Nations. There is there, there is a real concern by the public about uh, some of the issues with autonomous. Uh, weapons and 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 certainly responsible AI uh, is the way the Department of the Defense and and, and and within the Department of the Air Force uh, as the as the Chief Data and AI Officer implementing and amplifying these policies. I wanted to get out and lead uh, from the front and 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 show that the Department of the Air Force is very clearly not only um, focusing on this area, but we have an active leader of it, and so. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Joe Chapa was uh, one of the first big activities, but we've also, um, you know, built out a directorate within. So uh, adding to the name, we've added an organizational directorate, um, building on a lot of uh, a, a lot of the governance and policy and integrating activities, because this is a team sport. It's not just us. We, we are kind of the unity of command or unity of effort within the DAF, but certainly um, we took over that responsible role from from the headquarters Air Force, the A5 and 7. Uh, so so strategy and, 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 and futures. We've also worked closely with strategic analysis. We work closely with the Air Force Research Laboratory and, of course, the MIT AI Accelerator, which is a bastion of our training and, and industry innovation uh, that is funded out of SAF AQ. So the acquisition side 
Uh, so we're tight partners with acquisition, both on the Air Force side and the Space Force side, and all the technical elements, as well as uh, many more, many more of the functional organizations. So it's a cooperate and graduate mentality. But nevertheless, having that unity of command, unity of effort allows us to cut through the bureaucracy, build the kind of the dialogue and the kind of um, really important in a collection of diverse inputs, because we got to get this right. This is not easy, but is so paramount to the National Security Commission on AI. Uh, and, 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 you know, the, the outcomes of that were really um, important drivers. And of course, the Jake, the Joint AI, uh, is, is the Joint AI Center, yeah, of course, the Jake for the DOD. And now as we've migrated, most recently with the December letter, um, the Jake is now folding into the uh, the Office of the Secretary of, of Defense is uh, what's called the CDAO, the Chief Digital and AI Officer. So uh, at the DAF level, I'm the Chief Data and AI Officer, but at the OSD level, it's the Chief Digital and AI Office. So I think that's going to be a really important set of uh, uh, organizational constructs that will allow us to build uh, much more uh, rapidly. And I think that's the key is we got to get after that. We got to be actionable. We got to be smart. We got to be informed. We got to take inputs from industry and academia. And, and really, that's why I'm here. I think you lead one of many really important uh, dialogue themes or stre uh, threads or streams. And I think those are uh, really important for us to both engage in, to communicate, to listen to, and then to act upon. Yeah, and so you 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 talked about so many things. I want to deep dive into. Uh, let's let's take a first one that's uh, a little bit uh, you know maybe uh, sensitive, but I think very important uh, when it comes to ethics and AI. Right? Um, I've seen a lot of people in the department obviously uh, be very focused on ethics, and I certainly I agree that uh, ethics are so important uh, in a world where AI could really uh, turn things uh, for the worse. At the same time. You also see China um, move very fast uh, with their AI adoption, having uh, kids learn AI at seven years old and so on. So they're not waiting for us to figure this out. Uh, I think we all agree that whoever is going to be um, leading AI will be leading the world. So now that we know that, um, where do you put the, the line between, you know, okay, we need, we need tangible outcomes, right? When it comes to AI, we need to get things done. We need war fighter outcomes, not just... Uh, a bunch of uh, policy documents, um, and which is really kind of unfortunately what Jake has been really pushing for the last couple of years until it's been folded into the the new CDA's office. And by the way, the they picked uh, a good, good, very good friend of mine who is going to do a great job to become the first uh, CDAO at OSD. But uh, yeah. b before we talk about that, where do you, how do you define that line between? It, okay, let, let's invest and spend time on ethics, but let's not forget we're here to build war fighting capabilities as well. Well, you know, that's a great question. And, and I think um, at its core, uh, to, 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 be very, uh, to be very succinct, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, uh, uh, whom, whom I have enormous respect for, DepSec Def Hicks, said, hey, these, these responsible AI uh, principles are res being responsible, equitable, traceable, reliable, reliable, and governable. And, and, you know, each of those has a deep meaning and, 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 and we could talk for quite a bit on those, but I think, uh, at, 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 at face value, they also are fairly, uh, self, uh, self descriptive. And I think, um, what she said, uh, to, 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 to really distill it down is, is we're going to follow these principles because we're going to do this right. This is what this is what our responsibility is from an ethical, uh, from, a, fr from, from a moral perspective, and consistent with our values and our beliefs uh, and the rule of law and consistent with um, uh, the, 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 the rights of humanity. And so as we, as we look at those, we're going to do things right or we're not going to do it. And that's exactly uh, the key message. And, 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 and therefore, having um, our, our CREO, or our Chief Responsible AI Ethics Officer, uh, as an integral part of our planning. But more importantly, we use, we use a board process that's part of our acquisition where we're bringing all the relevant stakeholders in at the right time or, you know, before the, the appropriate milestones have progressed too far into the acquisition life cycle. 
And so we're, 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 we're doing it on the front end of the acquisition life, life cycle. We're talking about it. We're cultivating uh, those, those, those discussions because we all know the gray areas are where the real challenges are. If it's black and white, it's simple, right? And, 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 and I think if you, if you read any literature on this, you know that the devil is in the details. And, and, and so having a person who can lead that structured dialogue, who can think systematically. And, and you know, I, I, my PhD is in, uh, in systems engineering. So I believe in breaking down these big complex systems of systems or families of systems into, uh, in, in, into manageable parts. And, and, and by driving and tackling those, uh, we, can, we, we can address the much bigger um, you know, problems, issues, challenges, opportunities. And so I think uh, that's how the, the, the two of us are working closely to instill that kind of structural approach to departmental thinking. And certainly that applies all the way through test and evaluation, verita- verification and validation. Um, and, and, you know, so we start looking at human machine teaming all the way from level zero to level five. Um, and, and it's not just, uh, you know, autonomous vehicles like we see so, so, so much across the, the, the globe. As we start looking at, at families of systems with aircraft, as we look at spacecraft and as we look in, 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 in applications for cyber, as we look at those domains, airspace and cyber across the Department of the Air Force portfolio, and supporting all those other joint services in, 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 in multi-domain areas at multiple levels of classification. This is how we're tackling it, and we're going to be able to make um, much uh, much progress um, against a, a, against a, uh, a set of challenges that are that, that are important for us as a nation. And so I think that's how we and our partners or allies are going to engage. And, and you are you are spot on. When uh, when our adversaries uh, may may have different moral or different ethical or different legal uh, or different command or hierarchical structures uh, that they can apply, uh, we think this is uh, this is doing the right thing. And and, and if you will, uh, the good guys or the good people um, doing the right thing uh, will 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 ultimately uh, succeed and win. And I think it is competition in the gray zone, certainly space and cyber um, you, you know, in in in, uh, in the past, we used to say fight tonight, uh, uh, but but it's actually fight right now as we look at the proliferation of cybersecurity challenges, even to our very democracy with the uh, you know security of the elections and our and our operations of our business and our and our public systems. Uh, it's vitally important, and space and cyber have been and will remain at the very forefront of that. So it's it's. Um, it's, it's very relevant to be thinking about and talking about this, both as a Space Force person and as an as a Air Force person. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, we won't have enough time to, to deep dive into some of these things you just mentioned. But uh, I guess I, I had one, one comment before we move to your uh, mobilization assistant of uh, the chief of space operation role. Um, I, I guess, you know, we I always find it interesting that we... When we look at the the titles of, of of some of these roles, right, we we added right the either ethics or uh, responsible right to these titles, yeah. But yet, I, I'm I'm always um, concerned when I don't hear the other side of it, which is well, fighter outcomes, right? I mean, I, I get we want to either for me either we call it like you know chief AI officer or whatever, right? Uh, the, now we're gonna call it chief responsible AI whatever, right? And now we, add, but we're not adding the other side of it, which is well, fight outcome, right? So, so I, I'm just always afraid when we keep pushing because it's 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 a balance, right? Um, just like cyber and moving fast and delivery of, of capability, the, the line is always pretty blurry, and I'm just afraid because we keep putting things in titles like this that we're, we're pretty much hinting that ethics. And a responsibility is more important than what fighter outcomes. And I think, you know, that balance cannot be lost. I'm, you know, I'm not asking for an answer here because we don't have the time, but uh, that's just my. Well, comment. I'm actually glad you brought that up because, you know, if, 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 if you take a look at, at, at even what I'm wearing here, I am a war fighter and, and I, you know, I've, 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 I've had, um, a, a career where I've got to serve in, in, in space cyber 
Uh, I currently, as you mentioned, fly, uh, you know, in the Airborne Nuclear Command Post, the Looking Glass. Uh, I've, I've, I've gotten to be a part of a, a you know, I've, I've deployed and I've been a part of many operations uh, across the globe. And I think that's really important to emphasize that at this point in time, the primary thrust that we're imbuing in the Department of Defense and within the Department of the Air Force specifically is the operationalization of data and AI ML readiness. And what does that mean? Certainly, it's about business enterprise efficiency, but more importantly, it's about mission operations capability and war fighting capacity and increasing those across the board. And I think data and AIML are, are so vital and intrinsic to that. Uh, they're the core of what we are, of what we do. And so um, some might say uh, we're weaponizing data. I don't really like that because of the broad uh, of the broad spectrum that is that is one thing that we're doing in order to be in in order to you know you got to have data to make data driven decisions and data driven decisions turning into actionable information is what leads to decision advantage and to information advantage and as we look at the joint war fighting construct from uh from the the, the joint staff that is the way the united states military is going to uh deter compete uh, and, 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 and defend the national security interests of the United States. And so um, that information advantage or that decision advantage is vital. And so um, much like we said, the short term is Ukraine and, and the long term is China. Uh, as we look at the Secretary of the Air Force's operational imperatives and that being the pacing challenge, uh, as you've seen a lot in the literature and, and, and news on, but this is all about data and AI ML readiness at the core. And so that's why um, getting it right is so important. But um, we, we got to get it right with responsible uh, actions, but we absolutely have to have outcomes. And that's why I'm very clearly leading from the front in that regard. No, that makes that makes so much sense. So, so tell us a little bit about. And you, you say there's obviously lots of overlap, which which makes a lot of sense. We don't want to have more people to coordinate with, right? There's plenty of that already plenty. in the building. But what what does that entail, right? I, I think most people don't know what a mobilization assistant even even does. Well, you know, it's a great question because you know, it, I think people really don't. You know, we say MA for short, but really, what I'm what I am is I'm the chief or I'm the senior reserve officer to the chief of space operations, General Raymond. So he's the head of the Space Force. He's also a joint chief, uh, and he's also the head of the 18th Intelligence Agency, uh, as, as the Space Force is one. So uh, he wears multiple hats, and so I'm his, uh, his mobilization assistant. And, and you know, when, 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 when day one, when we sat down and we talked, and he goes, you know, I selected you because... I, I'm building a digital service and I'm building a service that we want to have technology and lean, agile principles at our core because we're never going to have uh, a, 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 a big uh, or a large group of people, whether it's military, um, uh, civilians or, 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 or partners in, in the total force. We're just not going to have it. And he said, but, you know, you've you've been in industry for a decade. You've been at other agencies like NASA and the White House. You understand both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue. You got a Ph.D. And he says, you've, you know, you've 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 been to test pilot school. So you understand the flying side. You understand that mentality, the warrior ethos, um, while still having, uh, you, you know, a tech driven leadership uh, pedigree. And he goes, having just come from. Uh, the, the the 16th Air Force and and Air Force's cyber where uh, for two and a half years working for Lieutenant General Hawk, you know, the the, the every, everything from defending our elections uh, uh, to preserve the most sacred element of democracy to uh, to all the work on offensive and defensive cyber and information warfare, pulling all that together. He goes, that's critical to everything that we do in the Space Force. And we simply don't have people who have spent their whole life in the military who who, 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 who understand or have those experience uh, elements. And so uh, I, I feel really fortunate uh, to work for such, uh, for such a great leader at this important time. He and General Thompson uh, have created a, an extraordinary organization at a, a extraordinary time. 
Um, and, and, and this is the first year where with the president's budget that was just uh, delivered to Congress, uh, the FY23 budget of $773 billion, it's the first time that we build a resilient and effective architecture where we start laying that in for the Space Force because it's no longer, uh, it, it is a contested domain. It's no longer um, free from, uh, from, from the challenges uh, that other domains may, may, may have had for a very long time. So this is requiring a fundamental paradigm change. And, and I'm just honored and tickled and excited and, and, and uh, very energized to be a part of that. So that's what I do. That's uh, largely uh, in, in, in that role. Uh, last year, we came out with, a, I was a lead author, but we had, we, we had a great portfolio of, of, uh, of co-authors where we came out with the State of the Space Industrial Base Report. So again, very important, leveraging commercial services, leveraging uh, and, and, and stimulating uh, a, a vibrant and robust U.S. Uh, and allied partner space and, and broader industrial base. It's about bringing, uh, bringing a, a North Star vision and compelling uh, economic and national security focus uh, uh, focal areas into, into full view and, and driving those in. So I think that's one additional part that I do for him. Uh, likewise, uh, from, from my uh, time at the Office of Science and Technology Policy, uh, working as the, the Director for Space Aeronautics at the White House, um, I was a NASA person there, so I was a, a civil servant, SES. Uh, but but during that time, uh, we 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 worked a lot on the national space transportation policy and the national space policy, and 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 so as we are currently working on two important policies that this administration is 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 going to be rolling in uh, or out soon uh, it, it, across the interagency and department tapestry. We're, we're working that in earnest, and I think uh, bringing that past experience helps us, um, ag again, be a force multiplier. And that's true for all of our reservists and guards people supporting um, the, the Space Force. So um, we're really excited, and, and, and this year uh, this year is going to have some pivotal transformations, and I don't use that as buzzword bingo. Those are really, really substantive that... Uh, uh, you know, pending approval of the legislative packages and other activities, you'll you'll be hearing more about soon. So, uh, 2022 is big for data, big for AI, big for uh, the mobilization side of, of space operations, huge for the space force, uh, and 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 it's also very big for JADC2 and ABMS. Of course, you saw the implementation plan come out, uh, the JADC2 reference architecture 3.0. Uh, and we're continuing on our cadence of congressional reporting. So it's going to be high speed, low drag. Uh, certainly, um, it, it is it, it is a unique moment in history for all of those. Yeah, no doubt. And so like General Raymond is, is pretty lucky to have someone like you helping him achieving all these uh, very complex uh, uh, outcomes. But uh, what, what are you if you have to summarize? your top priorities and, and also your main impediments to getting this done. What, what, what are your like top, top three priorities? I, you, you can have a year CDO. Uh, obviously Eileen was a great partner. She's awesome. She's doing great, great work at OMB. What, what's your, what's your priorities? Well, simply put, I'll, I'll put an overarching theme and it's going to be action and positive outcomes in each of these areas. I already mentioned what they are for the Chief Data and AI Office, and that's operational operationalization of data and AI through business enterprise efficiency and, and uh, mission operations capability and war fighting uh, capacity increases. Uh, we have some, we, we have some uh, smart goals uh, with respect to, to, to those uh, and bringing that, to, uh, bringing that to fruition. On the space side, uh, certainly we have, um, you know, we, we, we want to secure our freedom of action in space, and that's uh, leveraging AI and machine learning and advanced analytics, uh, improving the survivability uh, through resilient and effective architectures, uh, driving in uh, responsible AI and, and, and machine learning. So we have uh, uh, systems and capabilities that guardians trust. Um, but as we look uh, writ large at the uh, at, at the broader Space Force goals, they 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 they, they kind of tie into delivering a secure and modern way of life. I think we already know that this year alone, we got 360, $365 billion space economy. It's key to every part of our life, but it's also fundamentally important to all of the services 
and, and, and certainly the Space Force. So the, the very mission of the Space Force is to, is, is to uh, support and defend US, allied in, in, uh, US and allied interests in space. So uh, that's, that's very big. Likewise, uh, delivering on integrated deterrence. And we've already talked about that. And I think that ties all the way from uh, basic deterrence and leveraging all of the multi-layered approach through um, uh, through our, 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 our nuclear deterrence with the nuclear command and control uh, and the modernization uh, of, our, of, of our forces and capabilities. Likewise, uh, delivering capabilities at speed. And I know you share this one deeply. Coming from industry where we had a strong sense of, of profit and loss and return on investment and a strong sense of, of, of you must have quality, you must have speed of delivery, and you must have superior performance and absolutely delight the customer. Trying to bring that kind of ethos in that business sense into leveraging everything from acquisition where we're using other transactional authorities, where, the, where, where we're using the full extent of, of what's on the books in terms of uh, acquisition regulations and in terms of modernization and innovation and operational applications, experimenting and prototype, playing a lot and partnering with the Defense Innovation Unit, who is doing some extraordinary work to, 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 to uh, stimulate non-traditional participants. I think having worked at, at, at a private corporation, uh, the largest woman-owned privately held aerospace defense contractor on the, on the private side to a Fortune 500 company, um, that, that wasn't focused on aerospace and defense, but did have a, a, a broad portfolio and, and, and had a commercial government defense sector, the lessons learned from those are invaluable to be able to apply those, whether it's the Space Force or data and AI, or whether it's our JADC2 and ABMS, because in all of those, our partnerships with industry, our partnerships with academia, and our partnerships on the international side with our, our, our allies and, 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 and friends, like-minded thinkers, are what will allow us to uh, remain uh, in the lead. And so that's, that's the core focus. The impediments, the impediments are, 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 are real, uh, are right, off, right off the top. And these are, these, these are no, uh, uh, no surprise to anyone. We, we have challenges with stability of funding in the and 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 and, the, and our and, and our PPB process. It doesn't evolve at the speed of, of of need. That's a structural issue. Likewise, I think our acquisition uh, we need to accelerate that and, and leverage all the tools that we have. And finally, we have an overclassification uh, challenge that uh, is still it makes it difficult. And so we need to be able to partner uh, with our allies and, and and friends and share information at the speed of relevance. And so. All those things are, 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 are stumbling blocks, but ones which we're systematically directing and, and, and attacking and working on. And, and, and I'm hopeful we will continue to make progress because at the end of the day, our, our, our adversaries get a strong vote and, and, uh, and, and they don't care. Uh, in fact, they, 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 they cheerlead those challenges. So we will overcome them together uh, and, 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 uh, and, 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 and be successful. So you didn't mention uh, any impediments when it comes to retention or, or attracting talent. What have you seen? Uh, I mean, obviously coming from the commercial side like me, I'm sure you, you felt some pain there. So what are your thoughts on what to improve or, or what do you see as a good way to get some of that problem solved? Well, I think that is, uh, that, that, that is fundamental uh, to our success. People, um, I, as I mentioned up front, people and data are the most important uh, strategic assets uh, that we have. But um, quite frankly, um, you, you, you set it up front. I, I, I you know, I, I, I took, uh, I believe somewhere uh, north of 90% pay cut or took a couple of zeros off my paycheck to come back. <laughs> Why would you do that? You'd question your a normal person's judgment. Well, yeah. the, the reason is, is because um, the, the, the private sector, you can do extraordinary things, but there are certainly some structural or intrinsic or some vector setting or policy setting things that you can only do in government. And that's very much the same reason I would imagine that you came to government because you saw the need. But most importantly, you're a patriot. You're a believer in our system and our way of life. And you're a believer in uh, doing the right thing. And you put your actions 
uh, instead of walking or talking the talk, you'll walk the walk. And so that's why I'm here. But I'm here just like you were with a sense of urgency every single day. I don't waste a single hour because that hour is gone and we have to be doing something productive. And so every hour, every week, every month matters. And so I think we need that sense of urgency because that's what it's going to take in this current environment. But back to the people, you know, our talent, our, our talent acquisition and our talent management don't even, I mean, we have extraordinary people and we're, we're, we're making some great strides, particularly in data and AI. But, you know, in industry, when I left at my Fortune 500 company, we our goal was to hire from from the time of of of, of announcement to onboarding 30 days or less, because that's what you have to do to compete in a very competitive environment. And you had to have a benefits package and a compelling mission and a salary that were commensurate. You had to have you had to convince them that you were going to be a great leader and that was a, a professional and a nurturing and a diverse uh, environment where they could do their best work. We as leaders in the military and in the government have to set the same, but we got to have a faster and better ability to onboard people. We need to be able to retain people by paying competitive salaries. But I don't think everybody comes here for the salary. And that's the mission. I think com you know, compelling, awesome missions like there are in the Department of the Air Force, like there are in the Air and Space Force, like there are in the Department of Defense or the government uh, you know, I've I've gotten to work at so many incredible jobs that, you know, I was actually surprised they paid me sometimes. But of course, my wife and kids preferred uh, that to be the case. But the truth is, is 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 we have extraordinary opportunities here, but we got to channel and use them and we got to treat people right. Likewise, not micromanaging. We you know, I think I think we got to give the top level strategic direction and then drive responsibility and authority down to the absolute lowest decision levels and 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 at all echelons of decision give people those strategic factors hold people accountable but give them the tools and resources on time when they need way easier said than done but i'm still convinced there's hardly any better leadership laboratory or any place to do extraordinary things than uh than some of the missions within the air force and the space force and the department of defense and when you overlay the, the magnitude and scope, I mean, with a $773 billion budget, that is, that, that is absolutely uh, a sufficient amount to do extraordinary things if we're efficient, effective, focused, and we work with a sense of urgency with awesome people. Yeah, you spawn on. And I can tell you, after leaving the department, there's only one problem working in DoD is that when you leave you end up finding every job on the planet boring. So there's just nothing like, you know, uh, being on the inside and helping make a difference. So I, I can tell you uh, uh, not a lot of other things are still getting me excited. So, uh, all right. So, and you know, uh, you, 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 you had a profound impact. I mean, I think, uh, you know, to every, to everything, there's a season, right. But, I, I actually believe permeability in government is a good thing. I think having people, uh, you know, I, I, I would proffer, you know, I think I'm, I'm one of a, you can probably count them on one hand, the number of general officers in the, in the department who have, a, who, who have a PhD or people who understand EBITDA, what EBITDA is. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and yet those are fundamentally important elements in, in, in an economy and a national security posture that's driven by technology and STEM, right? And, yeah. and, and, the, and the same is when we talk about robust commercial partnerships, you got to understand both sides of the equation. That's why I strongly encourage and welcome people. And that's one thing that we're doing in the Space Force is, is, is with the Guardian Ideal uh, and, and, and with the space, uh, the, the space component, we're driving to a level of permeability. So much like, um, you know, we can hire um uh, chaplains and and, and, and and lawyers and doctors um, at an accelerated grade and, and rank, we can do so or will be able to do so, we hope, um, with the Space Force all the way up to Colonel. And I think that's very important. But more importantly, we want to be able to have people who go to industry, come to government, go to industry and come to government, whether that's education with industry or internships or partnerships, or, or, or public-private partnerships or collaborative. There's a litany of different, uh, you know, vehicles and venues that we can do that in. But I think when we structuralize that, 
we win. And I, I tell you what, I know you, Nick, uh, you will be back in government. But, you know, <laughs> I hope you're at, a, at, at another echelon higher. I hope you're able to come in because I think we both know that the, the higher up you go, the more the span and scope that you can have this positive impact on. And you can also marsh, marshal a, a greater set of resources. And so I think that's the responsibility to those who have that public service drive, that desire to make the world a better place. And I think uh, that's what will keep us fresh and hot. But, you know, uh, I, I, I would not change my time in industry. I'm way better as a government person having been in public and private industry and then being a, a, a CEO. Um, it, it, it is different than, than all the government experiences that I had in all the leadership echelons, both in business settings and in war fighting and operational settings, in cockpits, behind keyboards and behind desks and, 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 and outside in the field. All of them are different. And I think that richness and diversity makes us better able to solve the gray area problems or really tackle and also solicit and welcome. Instead of having, you know, a bunch of yes people or group think where we breathe our own exhaust, having that richness and diversity of perspective and in, in, in inputs is what makes us uh, really great. Yeah, you're spot on. And, you know, you mentioned there's probably uh... – uh, only a few generals with a PhD. I can tell you there's probably even less generals that were CEOs of companies and went back to serve after that. So we're grateful you did that. But uh, <clears throat> the next question we got uh, by a lot of people was, uh, what is missing today with our IT enterprise services to get to, to the outcomes you were talking about in terms of data, AI, and so on? Well, as as, as I, I believe you've had Ms. Lauren, Mrs. Lauren Knausenberger, our, our, our Department of yes. Air Force uh, CIO, we've got Honorable John Sherman as the DOD CIO. I, I, I think writ large, you know, we're, 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 we, we, we've seen the fix my computer challenge and, and, and uh, uh, Ms. Knausenberger is, is, is absolutely leading, uh, you know, the integrated team to get after that because, uh, let's let's face it. Enterprise IT is foundational to everything we do. We're we're 22 and a half years into the uh, 21st century here, and 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 the information the information age is fundamentally dependent upon uh, a a basic set of uh, IT capabilities and services that are, are responsive and reliable and and robust uh, against uh, an onslaught of of, of continuous cyber. Uh, attacks and probes and penetrations, and it's and, and it's it's balancing uh, that that service with uh, affordability and mission capability. I think we're uh, that that team is really getting after that. No doubt, she talked eloquently about the work there. But I think writ large, every single person would say, uh, if you ask them a yes no question, are you happy with where we're at in enterprise IT? The answer would be no, and 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 we know that, and 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 Ms. Knausenberger would be the first person to say that. But it's 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 the ability to get after that and treat that every bit as important as any weapon system that we have, because I think we all know that getting our people and our and our forces, so our forces and resources mobilized and 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 and, and effective, requires that in the information age. So, quite simply, a lot of great people working diligently at that. We're going to have to. Um, do even better, and 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 I know she is absolutely committed to that. Uh, and 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 it's and it's also getting that unity of command and unity of effort, uh, making sure we clearly articulate uh, the requirements, the needs, uh, the sense of urgency, funding that as a, as a priority. And I think all those things are 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 absolutely an integral part of the plan and the work that's being affected. Uh, but we've got a heck of a lot more to do. And as you know. From an industry side, having that interoperability with industry, I mean, sometimes it's easier in industry because you, 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 you can make the investments when they're needed. You can, you can have the, 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 the directed, um, there, there aren't, you, you aren't hurting so many cats and dogs. But I think as we look at, uh, as we look at that and leverage more and more industry best practices, as we leverage, uh, you know, enterprise IT as a service, as we leverage uh, commercial providers, whether whether that be the mesh cloud or edge node computing, or um, as Dr. Costa and the CTIO team are looking at uh, the metaverse or the spaceverse, 
those are all great aspirations and important uh, forward vectors for us. But you got to have the fundamentals. And when we look at that enterprise IT, zero trust, DevSecOps, um, you know, continuous ATOs where applicable, ATO uh, robustness and rigor, we need to have that as table stakes. And, 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 and I think we can help that through command directed uh, decision making as well, because we do the homework, we need to move out and, and, and get it done right. And I think that's how I'm uh, looking at the data and AI uh, enterprise. And so, um, you, you know, that fundamentally must ride on, on, on an enterprise IT uh, a, a capability and services are an integral part of that. So um, it, when, when, when we talk it, DevSecOps and zero trust, those, th those are essential and, and, and zero trust at the data and user level to be able to enable JADC2, to, to enable uh, to have the right level of multi-security interoperability at the speed of need. Uh, so that, that, that is table stakes. Yeah, now and you open the door for my my last question before we take questions from the public. Um, so what is uh, so we've seen the publications right from the joint staff and uh, the the latest implementation plan. Great, a lot of paperwork, right? A lot of uh, I, as I like to call it vaporware. Uh, how do we get to that real Jazz Two implementation? You've been the lead for the space for for Jazz Two and ABMS. At what point, you know, ABMS and all the Services are, are building, you know, their product convergence and overmatch. It's it's done mostly. I mean, let's face it, in a vacuum, there's collaboration, but every uh, duty service is building their own JADC2 right now. How how do we get to a join a real join effort? And what's um, what's going to be the most important outcome you think of getting this done? Well, that's the hundred thousand dollar question, and the answer to it is is we have to get specific and we have to anchor. Uh, we have to anchor some core uh, elements and then build out from there. As you mentioned, we've got the Department of the Air Force Advanced Battle Management System. Uh, Brigadier General Jeff Valencia uh, and I lead that for the Air Force and Space Force, respectively. We've got um, the the Navy's Project Overmatch and the Army's Project Convergence. Right now, we we as we mentioned, we've got the the, the implementation plan. It's uh, it, it says all the right things. We've got the JADC2 Reference Architecture 3.0. I would say objectively, it's too ambiguous. We need to drive to a level of specificity. You started some of that work by focusing on the min viable products, uh, and 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 that's exactly driven home when the the new secretary of the Air Force, Secretary Kendall, came in. Um, the first uh, of, of of many meetings with him launched into, uh, you know, uh, th this is a really hard, complex problem. Um, we, you know, our everything systems, our big utopian systems have been a, a trail of tears, future combat system, future imagery architecture, and a litany of others. I think he said something, uh, you know, as the former ATNL, uh, he said, you know, C2 systems had the worst track record or says something like 7% writ large. And so he was absolutely uh, uh, very rigorous in, in, in helping us to shape and refine and align this also with a, a sense of the operational imperatives. What we're doing now is moving out. And I think things like, you know, platform one, if we use platform one and we, and, and, and we, uh, you know, that is, that is already a, a, a developmental environment where we can have uh, DevSecOps and zero trust and, and Kubernetes and containerization or all the table stakes to do what we need. If we bring, uh, if we bring, uh, the, the the services into that and, and 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 make that the platform of choice. I think that would be a great stride forward. Um, I know we're talking about it, uh, Lieutenant General Crawl and Brigadier General Rob Parker. Um, but I think that's one of the areas that I think would make uh, a, a, a significant benefit. Additionally, we are working very closely. We do quarterly reporting. With, we, we're working with the services and do that quarterly reporting with the services. Congress, both uh, on, on the House and Senate, is holding us accountable as is OMB and, 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 and our broader OSD stakeholders and, 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 and White House stakeholders. But we need to put that action to work. And that's why we have very specific plans. We recently put out a, 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 uh, a couple of, uh, for the DAF ABMS, uh, we had a, a, a fair opportunities or a FOPR announcement out. We had an industry day where we got 30, uh, 30, uh, 33 inputs in. We're taking that actively. We're rolling that into our plan. We're doing a lot of sprints and, and a lot of operational uh, performance planning through uh, CPTs and through 
uh, focused sprints. And so we're moving out to add that level of specificity. We're building it into the POM uh, and our budgets, and we're actively participating in Project Convergence 22, Scarlet Dragon, and a litany of other exercises that are are, 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 are both Air Force centric and bringing uh, our department in the Air Force centric, as well as most importantly, the, the, the joint centric uh, and joint uh, activities. So uh, it's, it's, it's a long answer to a very important uh, make it real because I, like you, do not want to see PowerPoint engineering or vaporware or big cloud cartoons anymore. Those are important. They baselined us. Now we need to turn those into real objective quality results. Indeed. And, you know, my, my fear is until Congress gives a centralized budget to General Kroll and starts uh, merging all these uh, redundant uh, work from the services and, and potentially designing executive agents on the at the service level. I'm not saying the service shouldn't be involved, but I think uh, until we, we start um, hurting the cats uh, when it comes to convergence overmatch and, and ABMS, it's going to be very tough to get to a real join outcome. But uh, let's take some questions from the public. We don't have a lot of time left, but um, Michael was asking, how do you intend on developing these emergence technological capabilities in the Air Force while maintaining an unbiased arms length transaction from commercial vendors? Well, it's a great, it's a great question. You know, it's a balance, right? It's a knife edge balance. We absolutely want to uh, explore and evaluate and, and be aware of and consider uh, the, 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 the latest and greatest in terms of innovations across any of uh, uh, the relevant areas. And, 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 and sometimes, uh, you know, whether it's large, medium or small providers or traditional or non-traditional uh, providers, we want to encourage the broadest possible ecosystem that we have. We got a lot of tools in the tool set, but from, you know, as the acting chief technology and innovation officer for, uh, for, for, for the Space Force before Dr. Costa arrived over the last summer, uh, we drove in the long-range S&T plan, communicating our needs. We're also very clear and specific about putting out the doctrine and the and the space power strategy and the space power visions. Uh, and 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 as we look at the same in data and AI, where things are moving so fast, and where where we don't want to have vendor lock, we want to encourage competition, and we want to encourage. Um, you, you know, a, a level of resiliency and redundancy. So, you know, mesh cloud, multiple providers are a great thing, backed up by fiber and backed up by 5G and, and, and looking ahead at 6G. All those are important. Same as we look at everything from quantum, quantum algorithms to quantum resistant algorithms to, uh, a, a, you know, a litany of, 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 you know, as we look at GPUs and some of the work in chips and edge node computing, all these areas uh, to remain abreast, you have to dialogue, you have to engage with commercial vendors, you have to have them as part of the team, you have to have money, because that's the one thing I hated as a contractor is RFIs or free industry slave labor, and we overuse them in the government. Now, they, they're they an effective tool, but you got to follow that up with money, or you got to follow that up with multiple contracts to make it to make it viable. Otherwise, it's just an opportunity cost, and it's very hard for smaller businesses to do so. And sometimes that's where the real magic is happening. So hopefully that answers that one. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, here is the other question. Um, don't you think that we need to uh, switch our focus to problem-oriented solution approach? In other words, scoping a problem, then finding the best way to solve it using new tech uh, can work. That absolutely, yes, is the answer to that. Of course, that is exactly what we're doing. We the first the first chart in many of these is is what's the problem statement and 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 these are uh, and, and and these are outcomes. These aren't you know so problem oriented solutions and and outcome outcomes oriented actions. So I, I I'm a big believer in that. I also like performance based specifications. I think um, I, I I think it's crazy to think the government knows uh, with 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 explicit explicit prescience uh, every every issue and 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 uh, it's 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 kind of nonsense. So uh, absolutely agree. Yeah, last question before we run out of time with you. Uh, Lance was asking, and he's, he's asking a fair question, right? What have, have, you, have we done? I guess you've done. Uh, have you changed the POM, AT or something? Uh, it sounds like we're talking a lot about policies and kind of paperwork, but uh, what is well, it that actually yeah, doing? And, 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 and the truth is, is that is the unsexy part at first. That's foundational 
uh, to getting everything set up. We, we, we have to uh, also do a lot of training to get our workforce and our people to be smart buyers and smart engagers. But we, you know, we have a litany of very real activities, whether it's predictive and preventative maintenance, whether it's leveraging that in terms of imagery and support, leveraging it in terms of change detection. All these can be applied to Ukraine. All these can be applied to uh, our, our, our future scenarios. We're also actively using them uh, in, 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 as I mentioned, in, in flight training, air operations, spacecraft operations, ground, cyber activities. Um, I got a litany uh, personnel management uh, taking, you know, something. If we go back to the people and I'll close on this, being able to pull across the active duty, the reserve, the guard, the civilian, the contractors, the retired, the separated people and be able to do that and, and, and look for specific competencies and capabilities and technologies. That's vital table stakes. Um, and, and that's just one of the examples of uh, a budget. And, and, and logistics and, and criminal investigations all across the board covering uh, A to Z. Well, uh, John, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time. I know it's uh, you're very busy and getting an hour of your time was uh, very generous of you. I don't want to abuse of it. Uh, we're going to let you go and do better things. Like you said, we're counting minutes uh, to get things done. So it's always uh, critical to focus on the right things. So I wanted to thank you again. I'm, I'm going to keep the audience here and let you go back uh, to work. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. And thank you, audience, for being uh, so engaged. I, I really appreciate your leadership and look forward to the next time out here. Thanks. All right, everybody, just wanted to remind you a few things uh, before uh, we let you go. Uh, first, we launched uh, a new segment um, just last week, and uh, it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, so you can go uh, on the link uh, below. I'm going to put it into the banner so you can check it out. Uh, on, under my YouTube uh, page, you're going to see every week uh, the news. And we're going to try to cover, you know, three to five news subjects. Try to keep it under 10 minutes if we can. Um, so please uh, subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, the link is, is right here. We got uh, in the first week uh, 530 subscribers. So I'm very thankful uh, for you to follow us. If you've not done that, please go on YouTube and subscribe. And also, if you see act, 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 uh, news and, and you see things that we should be covering, in that segment, uh, please make sure you reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, or directly uh, in a private chat to be able to uh, let me know about a specific uh, news subject you want me to cover. Like I said, we're going to be covering three to five uh, subjects per week. Um, wanted to thank everybody. We're going to have a next session on uh, Tuesday <coughs> with uh, um, my dear friend uh, Tracy Bannon from MITRE, uh, who is going to be uh, discussing with me the importance of culture people <clears throat> training how to build a strong and innovative uh, software team what are the uh, success stories of the uh, DoD software factories what are the things we could be improving and how to uh, invest and uh, partner in the department will be some of the things we'll be talking about next week on Tuesday at 1 p.m. so uh, make sure you join us and uh, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll talk to you uh, next week.